you saw me. Out of the billions of people, you saw me. And you said, I love you. I love you. He said, I love you. I love Some of us were alcoholics. Some of us were drug addicts. Some of us were hard workers. And God still looked at your mess in the fire. And he said, I love you. I love you, Patricia. I love you, Brianna. I love you, Yvonne. He said, I love you forever. I love you forever, God. Hallelujah. And God, all the simple thing we can do is just love you back. The most easy way to repay God is to love him back. All you want is our love. We love you, God. We love you. We love you, God. We love you. Say we worship forever. We worship. I'm going to worship you, God. I don't care who's looking at me. We worship. We worship. We worship you, God. We worship. We worship. We worship. We worship. I worship you when I'm at home, God. I worship you when I'm in the car, God. I don't care because I just want to say, I love you. I just want to say, I love you. I just from the bottom of my heart, God. From the bottom of my heart, God. I say, I love you.
wave offering. Hallelujah. Give them a wave offering and say, God, we love you. We adore you, God. We come before your presence, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, God. We thank you. If you need prayer, if you're going through something in your life, if you have a trial or a test or a sickness or you need healing, the altar is here. The altar is where we come. Hallelujah. The altar is open so that you can come and pour out your your uh, your your heart, pour out your mind, pour whatever is holding you down. Sometimes we come to church and we have so much baggage. Hallelujah. We have so much baggage. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Like Elder Lloyd said, the altars are open. If you have a need today, if you want to stand in the gap for someone, amen, we ask you at this time if you would come down to the altars. Amen. We know the school is getting ready to begin. If you have a child, amen, that you want to want pray for today, we want to ask, amen, if you would, uh, uh, amen, walk with them down to the altar. And if we want to anoint them with oil, we want to anoint them with oil and pray the prayer of faith. Amen. Come on now. Hallelujah. Amen. How many people believe in prayer? Amen. Do you believe that God answers prayer? Amen. Well, we're going to go to the Lord. Amen. We're going to exercise our faith in the name of Jesus. And we're going to pray for these, amen, that are at the altar. Amen. Hallelujah. If you have a loved one that's not feeling well in body, amen, and you want to pray for them, just come down to the altar. If you're not feeling well, the Bible says, call for the elders of the church, anoint them with oil, pray the prayer of faith over them so that they may be healed. Amen. I don't know about you, but amen, I want my loved one healed. If you're not feeling well today, come on, somebody. Amen. God's got everything you need at an altar. Amen. At the foot of Jesus. It's at the foot of Jesus. Amen. If we can just press our way to Jesus. If we can get into the presence of the Lord. If we can touch the hem of his garden. My God, hallelujah. God, I'm pressing my way to you today. I'm pressing my way to the altar. I'm pressing my way to get into your presence. Come on in the name of Jesus. God, we pray right now, Lord, that you'll touch all these at the altar, God. God, let your virtue fall. Let your anointing fall. Let your presence fall. God, heal fall. Heal it right now in the name of Jesus, God. Lord, we have loved ones that's not, not well in body. We pray for them today. We pray, God, that you'll heal them, God. We pray, God, that you'll save them, God. We pray, God, that you'll fill them with the Holy Ghost. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, even for the children, God, that's getting ready to go back to school, God. We pray that the blood of Jesus will be over them, God. Lord God, protect them, God, in the schoolhouse, God. Protect them, God. God, be with them, God. Put a hedge about them, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we pray, God, for every parent, God. Let them pray. Let them anoint their child every day. Let them pray over their children, God, before they leave the house, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we pray for every teacher. We pray for every school. We pray for every child that goes into that school. Come on in the name of Jesus. God, we believe in you, God. We hold it on to your word. We hold it on to your promises, God. Lord, we pray right now for healing, God. Lord, we know right now, God, that Lord, you made this body. You're able to heal this body. You're able to run everything back up, God. We pray right now, God. Lord, take away all sickness. Take away diabetes. Take away cancer. Take away tumor. Take away all Riders. Lord, take away all these spirits, God. Take them away in the name of Jesus. Make me whole. Make me whole. Make my loved one whole. God, we pray right now, God. Lord, protect the lives of your children. God, they're going to try to teach them. God, evolution. They're going to try to teach them that there's three different gods, that there's no God. But God, we know, God, right now, that you are the only God. God, let it be resident in their mind. Let be resident in their thoughts, oh God. Let them know, God, without a doubt, that there is one God, there is one Lord, there is one faith, there is one baptism. God, let it be in their minds, God. Let them know that there is no evolution. We did not come from a monkey, but God made us in his image. God made us in the image 
of himself. He created both male and female. Created he them in the name of Jesus, God. We pray right now, God. God, we come against everything that's coming against your church, God. All this hypocrisy, all this hypocrisy, all this falseness, all this lay of the sea and spirit. We come against it in the name of Jesus. Raise up some prophets. Raise up some apostles. Raise up some evangelists. Raise up some pastors and teachers, God, that will preach the unadulterated word of God in the name of Jesus. Let us not be afraid of their faces. Let us tell them what thus saith the word of God. Let us tell them, God, raise up some Ezekiels. Raise up some Jeremiah's. Raise up some men and women of God that's not afraid of the politics. That's not afraid in the name of Jesus. God, we pray right now, even for a release in this place, God. My God, some of us came in today. We've been weighed down. We've been burdened down. But God says, cast your cares upon me, for I care for you. Come on, if you're here today, hallelujah. Amen. My God, if you got trouble in your home, amen, believe God today. Amen. Begin to rebuke that spirit. Begin to rebuke that, that confusion in your home. Begin to take authority in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Even if it's your marriage, you got to stand up on the word of God. You can't let nothing separate you from the presence of the almighty God. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Let God put together. Let nothing put asunder. Let no devil separate what God put together. Don't you know your marriage is a testimony? Don't you know your marriage is a testimony? Amen. About the power of God and how he can heal and how he can deliver and how he can take away uh, and get every past error, every past sin. Uh, he will make it uh, where it never be brought up again. Uh, and you can love and live. Uh, you can live in love. Uh, you can have one another as God ordained it to be uh, in the word of God. Uh, come on, somebody. Do you want that in your home? Uh, do you want that in your marriage? Uh, do you want that in your house? Uh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My God, I want you to know, amen, God's still on the throne, y'all. Yes, he still reigns king. Oh, yes, he yeah. Amen, everything you need, he's oh, got it. Yes, he everything you need in your life, God's got it. God's got it. Amen, he, all power belongs to him. Yes, Lord. All power. There is no power on this earth that can compare to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen, he can blow his breath and blow the earth out of orbit. Come on, somebody. Amen. My God, that's how powerful God is. Amen. We love him. We are saved by grace. It's the grace of God that he woke us up this morning. It wasn't your medication that the doctor gave you. It wasn't your prescription drugs. It wasn't your alarm clock. Your heart could have stopped beating last night. It used to be a time, amen, where the obituaries had people over 50 in the obituaries. Amen, but look at the obituary in your newspaper today and see how many young people your age dying in their sleep. How many young people, amen, having heart attacks? Yeah. How many young people plagued with cancer and all these diseases at a young age? Why? Because God wants us to know that he controls our life, that he is in control, and every man, every woman, every child has an appointed time. You have an appointed time. And baby, we don't know when that time is. But in the meantime, we're going to live for God. We're going to live for Jesus. We're going to dedicate our life to Him. And ain't nothing on this earth going to separate us from the love of God. If you believe that today, amen, just cry hallelujah. Just say thank you, Jesus. Come on, if you're a child of the King, amen, just say, Lord, I love you. I love you, Jesus. You're my everything. I can't make it without you, God. I need you in my life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We thank God, amen, for his presence in this place today. Amen. We thank God for what he's doing in the house of God today. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. Amen. On Friday night, amen, we had a youth service in here, a back-to-school rally, a rally. Amen. We have some young preachers preaching. The Spirit of the Lord was here. Amen. We passed out, amen, 20, 30 backpacks. 
but we have some backpacks left. And we want to pass those out today. Amen. So that's why, amen, the service is kind of set up like it is. You know, you know, traditionally, I'd have a tie on. I'm going to be wearing jeans. But, amen, we're doing this for our youth. Amen. We love our children. Yeah. Amen. We love our children. And we want them to have the very best. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Those, praise God, that don't even go to this church, we still love the children. Yeah. Amen. Because the enemy is after the children. He's trying to plague their mind. He's trying to praise God, let them realize that, amen, that God don't love them, that God don't exist, and look at you, you have no, that's the devil. That's the devil. God does exist, and God does love you. Amen. So we got a couple of people that's going to come up right now, praise God, and talk about, amen, the love of God and their heart, how they love children, amen. And I'm going to ask at this time, amen, we got a broken Earl police officer, amen, that's in the house of God. And he's going to come up, amen, and just share his heart in reference to the children. And, amen, just give them some guidance and instruction, amen, in the way that is right. Amen? amen. So we thank God, amen, for Elder Jonathan Lloyd, amen, Broken Arrow Police Officer. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. How y'all doing today? Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good, isn't he? Yes. Come on, God is great, isn't he? All the time. Come on, I feel the spirit of the Lord here. I'm just so grateful to be in the house of the Lord one more time. My God, and he did say, yes, I am a broken arrow police officer, but you know what I am? First and foremost, I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I believe in godliness. I believe in holiness. I believe in doing things right. Amen. And God is so gracious enough, amen, that he gave me a profession where he actually fitted me in so that way I might be able to help other people just as a police officer. Because it's not about taking people to jail. It's not about, uh, you know, trying to have, uh, I guess, just authority over people. But it's really about helping people. No matter what society is out there pushing, trying to make it a black and white thing, a law enforcement thing, or anything else, I treat everybody like they are a child of God. Because that's what God has called me to do. There are times that I had to witness the people and just tell them that God still loves you. And even though you might be in the back of my vehicle right now, God still has a plan for your life. And this ain't the worst place. Because you know what? To be in the back seat of a man of God's police vehicle, you could be somewhere else. Yeah. You could be dead in God or be in the hospital. Yeah. Amen. But I truly thank God for the opportunity in this moment just to speak before y'all. Um, last Friday, I spoke about just safety in the schools. And um, pretty much, that was pretty much the overall uh, uh, concept is just safety. No matter where you go, no matter what you're doing, you always want to be safe. And especially since we have our children and we know that they're getting ready to go to school and everything like that, you just want them to have in mind safety. Your teachers are out there for your well-being. Your parents are out there for your well-being. Even though they say something to you that you might not want to do sometimes, well, you got to go to school. you got to wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning. you got to eat breakfast at this time so that way you can be out by the bus stop at 7 o'clock so the bus can pick you up by 7.10. And all this stuff is all for your well-being and for your safety. So safety really starts when you wake up early in the morning. you got to wake up listening to your parents and everything else. As soon as you start on your day, you're probably going to go to the bus stop. And when you see the bus stop, uh, you probably got some friends there and everything else and people are going to talk. But as soon as you get on the bus, Guess whose responsibility you now become? Bus the bus driver's responsibility. And the bus driver's responsibility is to provide a safe haven and a safe place for you to get picked up and then also to go uh, to your school wherever you get your education from. Now, you know, you have kids that are sometimes jumping up and down or even fights might happen on the bus and things of that nature. Do you take your cell phone out and take pictures or do you talk to the individual who's in charge of your safety and well-being? I'm going to talk to the individuals yes. in charge of my safety and well-being. And who would that be while you're on the bus? The bus driver. The bus driver, because the bus driver wants to make sure that you are staying safe, all right, while they're taking you to and from a home or the bus stop into also school. And then as soon as you get to the school, probably who you're going to see is probably your principal or your teachers, right? right. So what do you think your teachers are there for? Keep you safe. To keep you safe and also to give you an education, right? right. So once you're going through the hallways and everything else like that, you got a question or you see something unsafe, who do you think you probably should tell? 
teacher. The teachers, right? The teachers A, the substitute teacher, the principal, and everything else. Because guess what? While you're in there, you are actually underneath their charge, you're underneath their care. They have a huge responsibility for you. Okay, and then also to provide a safe haven for you to learn your ABCs, all the way, your arithmetic, and everything else like that. Now, we also know in school we have drills, right? Has anybody ever participated in a fire drill? Yes. Anybody ever participated in their tornado drill? Yes. Anybody ever participated in like a thunderstorm drill? Yes. What about an active shooter drill? Yes. I participated in those before it myself. But when you're in those drills, who do you think has responsibility for you? Whose responsibility? Who, who, who? This the teachers, right? Those who are conducting the drill. Now we know those things are important so that way you can do what you need to do according to the policy so that way they can keep you what? Safe. It's all about safety, all right? And then also some people, they walk to school, right? So you, if you walk to school, then you're going to see a crossing guard and they're going to have a stop sign. Right? And I'm pretty sure just as your mom or dad probably taught you, you want to make sure you look both ways across the street, right? But what do you think that crossing guard is going to do with that stop sign in their hand? Tell traffic to stop, right? So we should be running out into the streets, all right? We got to look both ways, make sure that the crossing guard sees us and everything else. And then my last piece of information as far as our safety goes, how many of y'all have school resource officers? police officers that are actually in your, in, in your schools that walk. Yeah. Well, look, I'm telling you, those are probably some of the most friendliest people that you'll ever be able to talk to. If you got any issue whatsoever, maybe your mom, your dad, or you got a bully or anything else like that, I guarantee you that individual, that school resource officer, he's there for your safety. He's there also to give you some good counsel. All right, and hopefully they're godly enough where they can give you some godly counsel at the same time. So with all that being said, look, God's going to cover you. God's going to keep you. There are people that are actually praying for your welfare. There are people that are actually praying for your safety. We plead the blood of Jesus over all the schools. We plead the blood of Jesus over all the students, even over all the teachers and the teacher's aides and everything else like that. Because at the end of the day, the enemy is trying to take you out. But as long as you're staying safe, as long as you're covered under the blood, we know that there is safety under God's pavilion. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let me hear y'all say hallelujah one more time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Everybody say praise the Lord. Praise Amen. The Lord. At this time, we're going to take up our morning offering. Praise God. We want to prepare ourselves, prepare our hearts and minds. Amen. For the offering. If you need a, a tithing envelope or an offering envelope, you can look to the uh, elder Christian in the back. Praise God. And he will have that handy for you, for you to fill out. Amen. If you need one, just lift your hand. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. And if we can just, as we prepare ourselves, hallelujah. How do you believe that, that you, we cannot outgive God? Amen. How many of you have known that God has been good to you? Yes. Amen. How many have God been really good to on this morning? Say, if you breathe in, I want everybody just to take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Breathe in. Breathe out. Amen. You got you got you got air in your lungs. Amen. God's been good to you. Hallelujah. Blink your eyes. Blink your eyes. Turn around and look at somebody. You're you you able to see, right? God's been good to you. Get up and just wave your hand. Just sit there and let's just wave our hand. You got the ability and mobility in your limbs, amen. You can move your feet, you can wave your hand. God's been good to you, amen. As long as you have breath, you have hope. My God, God has been a good God. And we can never outgive God. We cannot be God's giving. We have, we have our little mantra we say when we are ready, if we could all just stand to our feet, amen. I know a lot of time, praise God, we, we don't understand it's not just in monetary giving, but it's in giving of your time, it's in giving of yourself, it's in giving of your talents and your abilities. Everything that we have belongs to God. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's 
and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. And so we all, everything that we have, everything that we owe, it all belongs to God. And we ought to thank God, hallelujah, this morning because he has given us the ability to be able to give to back to him. Amen. But my God, we, we don't know God deserves it. He deserves it. Hallelujah. And we have it. We have it. Our, our, can we please stand to our feet? Amen. Praise God. And we're going to say our mantra that we have over here in Refiner's Fire International Ministries. If you have your offering, we ask that you just lift it to, as a wave offering to the Lord. And we're going to say, this seed that I sow, God will cause it to grow. God will cause it to grow. Not tenfold. Not tenfold. Not twentyfold. Not thirtyfold. Not fortyfold. Not fiftyfold. Not sixtyfold. Not seventyfold. Not eightyfold. Not even ninetyfold. But a hundredfold blessing. God will cause it to grow. I sow it in faith and not in doubt. Knowing the Lord has already brought me out. Sow your seed in faith unto the Lord. My God, hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We ask that you would bless this offering, Father, for the upbuilding of your kingdom, Father. We ask that you would use it for the saving of souls, Father, for the gospel of Jesus Christ to be spread throughout this land, Father. We thank you. We thank you for those who've given, those who did not have to give, but had a desire to give, Father. We ask that you would bless them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's give the Lord a hand praying. Amen. We want, praise the Lord, we want to acknowledge, amen, all of our first time visitors this morning. Amen. And when I call your name, if you could just stand, we want to show you here at Refiner's Fire that we really appreciate guests, visitors, for just taking the time out to come and visit us in the house of the Lord. And we want to recognize you because God recognizes you and he loves you. So we want to recognize Mark Z. Johnson. And he is a uh, visitor of Apostle Eugene. We met him at the gas station as we were in line. That's why it's the quick trip, the gas station where we were in line. That's why, and you remain standing, Brother Mark. And we just thank God. Amen. That's why it's so important to just be a witness in a life and speak to people wherever you go. It doesn't matter whether you're in a gas station, you're in a mall, you're in Walmart, wherever you're at, my God, on the fishing bank, wherever. Talk to someone, tell somebody, amen, about the, about the Lord. We want Lakeisha David, Lucretia Davis to stand. We thank God for Lucretia. She called this morning, amen. We want to show her appreciation. Amen. I think she is a guest from our Facebook. Am I correct? Amen. Praise God. Social media is also another great tool to reach out. Amen. And we want to uh, Karen Hopkins to stand. We thank God for Karen. She is a visitor of mine. And I thank God, praise God, that her and her daughter came out on um, this morning. And we thank the Lord for what he's doing. And before this our international ministry, you know how we do it around here. We want to greet our visitors, let our visitors know that we love and appreciate them. And we would love to see them back. Let's show them love in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah.
to the Lord Empress. We got some several more visitors that's coming in, and we want to acknowledge them as well. Hallelujah. We thank God. We thank God. Hallelujah. How many of you know that the word of God said that in the last day, God's going to pour his spirit out upon all flesh? And we thank God for his hand and his spirit still moving. Amen. If we just get him in the presence of God, God can do the rest. So we thank God. Amen. As, as the visitors are filling out their information, I just want to make a quick announcement. Amen. About our new program that we are starting uh, for our literacy program, our ASCRP program, our after school children's reading program. We are launching that as we go to begin. Uh, amen. Uh, starting next week. And we've already had from Friday night several children that have signed up to receive help, tutoring, as far as in reading. And how many of you know that reading is very yeah. important? It is the foundation of our children's education. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And we have so many, we have millions in this country that are illiterate, that cannot read. You adults. I had an uncle that was in his late 60s, amen, that could not read. He, it was really funny because he could read the Bible, but he could not read anything else. But I tell you what, God is a good God. Because how do you know, I remember one time, I actually was able, I, I went, had not went to college. I want to share a quick testimony. I had not been to college yet. I was still fairly young in my late, late 20s, and I remember and my oldest daughter was getting ready to start kindergarten and she wasn't reading and we were getting ready to put her in a little private school and we were under uh, the impression that this school would have her reading by the time she finished kindergarten. And I remember I drove, we, my husband and I, we drove, you know how you, you have when you first drop your child off at school for the first time. And we drove up to the building and we went inside and I will never forget what the Lord said because you know a lot of times we think college is what gives our mind the ability to think great. But it's not college, it's not school. It's the word of God. It's God's spirit. And I remember when I walked into the school building and I looked around and I in, in my mind I said, I can do, I can do all of this. I can teach. And I remember the Lord and I told my husband, I I I, about you, I said, I can do this. He said, well, go to school, get education. I said, no, 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 not, not like, I don't know. I said, it's not like that. And the Lord spoke to me. God said, who gives wisdom? And I said, you, Lord. He said, who gives knowledge? I said, you, Lord. He said, who brings understanding? I said, you, Lord. God said, that you have the ability in you to do whatever your mind can envision? And I tell you, I taught all my children to read. Yeah. And every one of them, teachers would come to me, teachers that had college degrees. I have since then earned a college degree, but they would come to me and say, who taught your children, school teachers, to read? And I said, I did, with the help of God. God wants us to understand that it's not by man's ability, it's not by our ability, it's not by our might, but it's by the Spirit of God. And so we are launching our ASCRP reading program, and we are, it was free, and we're extending it to any child that may need help in reading or struggling in school, amen, and are falling behind because they may not be able to read on grade level. And so we are, we, we are uh, in the business of helping our children, trying to promote our children for literacy, across this nation and our community and so we just want to do our part and if you are interested in this program and your child may need some extra help some to be strengthened to become a better reader just is, if we will have a sign up sheet out here in the back and you just can go to the table and you can sign your child's name your name the child's name a phone number and someone will contact you contact you all next week to set up times uh, of where you can come and your child can receive uh, after school tutoring for the reading program. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we want to acknowledge and recognize two other 
visitors. Praise God. And if you would, would we call your name, if you do not mind standing, Deanna Blackburn. Amen. Ooh, let's give her a hand and find the fire. And LaPaula McGee. Amen. Praise God. And I guess you guys are visitors from the Facebook. Is that correct? Amen. Let's thank God for our social media. We find us right now to you. Let's get up and let's give them a hearty welcome. Let them know their love and we appreciate them for coming into the house of the Lord. Amen. Oh, Father. Oh, Father. We thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. This time, we're going to recognize them as our visitors come in. We will recognize them throughout the service. Amen. But we just thank God for all of our visitors in the house. At this time, we're going to bring up Elder Alicia Lloyd, and she's going to continue on with the rest of our service. Amen. 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 I'm glad to be here. I hope, hope y'all glad to be here. Yeah. Right now, we're going to get a... Um, Introduce one of our speakers. She's a young lady. Um, she is a senior rep in Victory Christian, y'all. Um, she's also my baby sister. And so having her come up here to actually speak to you guys is awesome because she's, she's if you know my sister, you know who she just know her. <laughs> but if she's come up here, get with her. She's going to give her heart and her spirit um, and tell the young people who may be out there who's in school. Um, a message that's on your level. So, Felicia, come on up, sister. I let this to Felicia. Glad to be here for all y'all today, and to get this opportunity to teach what God has told me to teach to all y'all. Um, I will be talking about compromises, consequence today. I mean, some of y'all may have heard it, but I'm gonna try to make it a little different spin, just in case. So, um, we all know the story of David. When David was upon his roof and he saw his roof and he saw the woman bathing. But she was a married woman and he still wanted her so bad that he sent her husband off and got him killed. And he ended up sleeping with a woman, getting her pregnant. And in the end, their child died. And um, he compromised his values the day that he set upon his heart to kill the woman's wife. When she was made when he knew she was married, he should have been like I mean, kill Mama's husband, I'm sorry. When he knew she was married, he should have been like, mm, this is not right for me, I should not do this, but he compromised. We all know when Samson, Samson was the strongest man alive because of his, his um, bond with God. And Samson compromised twice in his life, and in the end, it did lead up to death too. Samson compromised when he first slept with an unchristian woman uh, Delilah, and he also compromised when he told her his secret to his strength. When God, you know, God didn't want him to do that, so he compromised more of his values by also sleeping with her and then telling her what that his hair was what was really the uh, strength about him. And um, another person who compromised was Eli. The priest Eli, he compromised his salvation for his sons. They were running to and fro, you know, sleeping with everyone, doing all these bad things. And Eli was like, mm, instead of reprimanding them, instead of chastising them, they're my sons, you know. They came out of my loins. I love these kids, so I'm going to put them before God. And Eli ended up falling and dying. There is a common thread between each one of these people. Like, when they all compromise, there's a common end to it. And by the end of this lesson, I hope you guys can get it. Um, so I'm going to start with the definition for compromise. A change that makes something worse and is not done for a good reason. Mm -hmm. We will now turn to Hebrews 10.26. If y'all have your Bibles, if you don't, you can just share someone next to you. Um, if not, I will be reading it out loud. And while y'all flipping there, I'm just happy that everyone can make it here today. Okay. Thank you everyone for coming today. and participating in this service and worshiping God with us. Just amen. If you have the verse, can you please say amen? Amen. amen. 
Uh, Hebrews 10, 26 says, For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. We we'll also be flipping to Proverbs 14, 12. Amen. Amen. I just uh, shake yourself off, shake off the weight, just turn to your neighbor and say, I'm glad you came today. Uh -huh. I'm glad you came today. Yes, Proverbs 14, 12. Yeah. If y'all want to stand, y'all can. It says, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Mm. And two verses down, it says, the backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. Mm. I'm going to try to tie those three verses together to get the common end to what compromise brings. Yeah. So I'm going to pray now. Lord, just use me as a vessel of you, God. Bless my voice, God, that I might be able to preach what yes. you have told me to, God. Pray that this... Lesson, Lord, that will impact someone's life, Lord, that they may know that compromise is not the right choice, that they sh they don't have to do it just to fit in or just to get money, Lord, or just to get higher in their job, God. Lord, just use me, God, today. In the name of Jesus, amen. You may all be seated. If you look at the definition of sacrifice, one of the Webster definitions of the word is to give up or renounce. Going even deeper, one of the definitions of the phrase, give up, is to cease doing or attempting something. Cease means to stop doing or to end. When you give up on something, it means you cease doing it. You don't continue doing it. You don't, mm, I'm just going to keep doing it for a little while. When you say, mm, I'm done with this, I give up, it means you set it in your heart that you're never going to do it again. That you have gave up on it. That is behind you in your past. You can't five minutes later go and do the same thing that you said you gave up on. Yeah. So if we flip back to Hebrews 10 and we replace the word sacrifice with cease, it reads something like this. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more cease for sins. Yeah. And since cease means stop, it means there remains no more stop for sins. Yeah. If you keep sinning and sinning after you have received the knowledge of truth, after you got saved... And there's no stop. There's no more stop for sin. God says, you can't just say, mm, "I'm just gonna, you know, smoke this once, just this once," and you know, I'll stop after this. I just want to, you know, look cool in front of my friends, or you know, I want to fit in this one party, or I'm just gonna compromise my values just this once, and I'll stop. That's really not how it works. You can't just do it and stop, because to keep fitting in, you're going to have to do it again and again and again. Yeah. You start a lie. You, um, I'm just going to take a little bit of this money from my mom's purse as a kid. Or um, I'm just going to cheat on this test this once to keep your grade up. You oh, can't no. just cheat once and then fail all the rest of the tests. You're going to have to keep cheating on the test to keep your grade up. Or um, you get a little bit of taste of that money. You're going to keep taking the money again from your mom's purse. And really, that can set in your heart. That already dampens your morals as when you're young. So when you get older, it really kind of warps what you thought about it in the first place. Right. When you get older, mm, you work a job, let's say you work an accountant, mm, I'm just going to take this little bit of money from here and no right. one's going to notice because mm, I'm over it. Or I'm just going to tell this lie to my boss, so oh, um, yeah, I'm just going to lie to him this once and he won't notice it. I'll probably get promoted for this. Or I'm going to take credit for this idea from someone else and they won't notice it because what are they going to do? No. You do it, when you do it once, it starts, it um, domino effects the rest of your life. You're going to want to keep doing it again because you think you get rewards from it. Once you open the doorway to sin, it's a hard journey to shut it again. Oh my God. Um, notice how the verse says, after that we have received the knowledge of truth. Receive the knowledge of truth. God said this for the people who do know him, for the people who say they love him, for the people who love him and sin willfully, for the backsliders. And that brings us to Proverbs 14, 14. The first part of Proverbs 14, 14 says, the backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. Going to the Western Dictionary again, backslider means to start doing something bad after you have stopped doing it. That seems to go perfectly with Hebrew 10 because someone who found God knows the right way and stops sinning only to sin again is what we would call a backslider. You, before you got saved, let's say you were smoking, drinking around, um, sleeping around, and you get saved, you meet God, you're like, mm, I'm done with that. I'm going to cease doing that. And 
one month later, you fall right back into the old pit you were in again. You're sleeping, you're smoking again, and you're doing it willfully. That is a backslider. Yes, you, right. you can't say, mm, I'm saved, but I'm just going to go run around and do all these sins. You're a backslider. You have backslidden in your mind. Oh, yeah. And the reason a backslider doesn't have a stop for sin is because it's easy for them to slip into a reprobate mindset. Oh, yeah. Reprobate means morally corrupt. Mm. Imagine slipping into a morally corrupt mindset. That also kind of has to do with the compromise thing, because when you compromise, you get a morally corrupt mindset about the thing that you compromised in the first place. Yeah, Lord. You you don't think about it the same way. You don't think it's as wrong as it was in the first place. Mm -hmm. When you start lying, you don't, mm, well, maybe lying isn't that bad. It doesn't hurt anyone, but it hurts yourself. You're slowly spiritually killing yourself every time you lie. And when you get a morally corrupt mindset, you end up not knowing your way from God's way. Which two verses up, we can see is a really horrible thing because Proverbs 14, 12 says, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So if you're morally corrupt, you don't know your way from God's way. And so you're picking your way every time. God says the end of your way are the ways of death. Wherever your path is, is the way of death. Because it's not God's path. You're taking your path is most likely than none, the broad, the broad and easy path. It's the way straight to hell. You're like, mm, you're not going to make the hard decisions yourself. Truthfully, we, none of us in here can say, mm, you know, I'm going to, without God, I'm not going to have his spirit in me, but I'm going to still, you know, not sin, live morally, oh, praise Jesus. Right. Without that's his right. spirit, you know how many temptations are going to come your way? That's and right. the test that you're going to fail without that's God right. in your life? Right. You can't do it your way yes. because you're going to end up failing oh, again and again and again. Right. You need God's way. And to have God's way, you can't have a morally corrupt mindset, which yes. means you can't be backslidden. You can't be a backslider and my have God, God's way. God. You can't sin willfully and have God's way. You That's have to do a right. complete 180. Mm, you right. have to turn away from the sins that you were doing before. So, to um, in the end, you need to do, you need to repent. And you That's need right. to completely turn away from that. And we can see in some examples that these are some real life stories about kids who end up compromising and it ended up leading to the ways of death, like the Bible says. Connor is smoking. Connor Eckhart is an example to many teens now. He is a 19-year-old boy who went to college and compromised his values just once, thinking it was just that one-time thing, that one, mm, I'm just gonna fit in just this one time, compromise my values just this once. He smoked one hit, just one hit of synthetic marijuana, and he died. That was it. It, all his friends were doing it. He was at a party. Everyone was like, hey, you know, you should do it too. He's the one kid who, because he, they said he did it in his teens. He went through a really bad stage, and he turned away from that. They said he went to rehab, got his life back together, and he was done with drugs. So when he went to that party, and he re-compromised the morals that he had built up, that was it. He compromised his values, and he died. A quote from his father said he gave in to peer pressure, thinking that it was okay. It was somehow safe. And one hit later, he went to sleep and he never woke up. Oh Drinking. A 17-year-old girl named Shelby Allen was at a family friend's house. She was a good kid, on a row, athlete, and an avid chopper. But like most other teens, when her friend's parents went to sleep and they were left around an open bar, she drank. It was her first yeah. time. And her friend said for some odd reason, she wanted to drink exactly 15 shots of vodka. She completed her goal and immediately fell sick. Her friend took her to a bathroom so she could be close to a toilet. But since the other friend was sick, she couldn't stay with Shelby. She did check on her periodically. And on the last time, Shelby was slumped motionless over a toilet with blood all over her face. She was later pronounced dead from alcohol poisoning. That one time, it was her first time drinking. Her friends, her parents, our friends' parents went to sleep. They left them around there, really kind of irresponsible for them to leave them around an open bar. And when her friends were like, hey, you know, come on, just this one time, they all drank all the time, nothing happened to them. She only drank that one time, and she died. She compromised that one time, and she died. Another story is sneaking out. A 14-year-old boy, Garrett Shaw, died in a car crash when he snuck out at night. And the 17-year-old boy, who was drunk and driving the car, crashed. Garrett's 15-year-old brother said he didn't want to sneak out and go to the party, while Garrett chose to compromise. 
He was a young kid who hung out with older people. He probably wanted to fit in with that older crowd. Yeah. So while he snuck out at night with everyone was asleep, and his brother said, mm, I don't want to do that. He snuck out with that older crowd, and he died. He compromised his values, and he died. Compromise will always have a consequence. Even in the Bible times, with the stories in the beginning, Samson compromised. In the end, he died. Yeah. Eli compromised. He died. My you cannot God. compromise who you are because it will never lead to anything good. Yes, my God. To tie those three verses together, in Hebrews 10, it says, For the same that to sin willfully, in the end there won't be a stop. And if you are saved and sinning willfully, you've backslidden, which brings us to Proverbs 14, 14, where it says, a backslider in their heart shall be filled with their own ways. And the last verse, two verses up, says, the ways of a man, the ways that a backslider's heart has been filled with, are the ways of death. To sin willfully, even after you know right, to compromise in itself are the ways of death. That's, that's really all there is. To compromise are the ways of death is what the Bible says. Yes, Plainly right. right here. You compromise who you are. It is the way of death. Yes, right. yes, but yes. why? I don't understand why when it's this plain, people still want to go out and compromise. People still want to, mm, just to get that little bit of money, is That's it really right. worth it in the end? Is it worth salvation? Is it worth heaven? Do you, is it, do you really want to go to hell just for that one compromise? That's right. Because to be sitting willfully and die because it's the way of death, means you can't, you're not going to heaven after you've just been sinning and sinning and sinning all this willfully and you die. You're not, that's not where your destination is in the end. So to compromise means you're not just dying, but you're also going to, in the end, miss out on heaven. So really compromise is just the wrong thing altogether. It is, it is a way to die. In the end, that is it. Compromise is a way of death. So if you compromise, I don't know what to tell you. The Bible says it is a way of death. So don't compromise, people. <laughs> that's, my, that's my lesson. Amen. Hallelujah. Can't take no shortcuts. Amen. Just because it's the easy way, that don't mean it's the right way. Amen. we got to stand upon the principles of the word of God. Don't compromise. I don't care if you in the school and all the classmates is acting up and doing things they shouldn't be doing. You don't compromise. Amen. You be the best kid in the class. Amen. At this time, praise God, Brother Doyle's going to come at this time, Elder Doyle, and he's going to bless us with a song. Amen. And then after he's finished, uh, Elder Yvonne Doyle is going to come up and introduce our guest speaker. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, I can, get, I can get a better hallelujah than that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, that's a little bit better. If we can all stand to our feet. I think everybody might know this song. I was going to sing another song, but my wife wanted me to sing this one. So here it goes. Come on, I just want to see y'all clap your hands. Come on, just begin to just clap. It's rolling down your face When your heart feels like it's gonna break When your earth feels like it's about to shake When you're taking all that you can't take Just remember where your help comes from Realize you got somewhere to run Don't worry about what you're going through Instead of worrying is what you can do. Praise him anyway. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You should praise him anyway. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm just like you. If you cut me, I'm gonna bleed. I got wants just as well as I got needs. I am hungry and I have no food to eat. Knocked out as soon as I got on my feet. Lord, it was you that helped me understand. And it was you that never let go of my hand. I promise that I'll always give you praise. No matter what this world brings my way, I'll praise them anyway. Come on, come on. Just begin to sing it 
the middle of you. introduce and kind of give them a welcome. Praise God. But how many of you enjoyed that message on compromise? I tell you, we cannot afford to compromise our salvation in the Lord, especially in the day and time that we're living in. You know, I think about Saul. Saul was an anointed king. God chose him above every, he was head and shoulders above everyone else, 
and God saw something in Saul that he did not see in anyone. Yeah, yeah. A humble heart. But through the course of time, Saul began to get lifted up and he began to compromise. He compromised his values. He compromised his anointing. He compromised his place in God for people. For people. For the favor of people. Rather than choose the favor of God. And so today we don't want to compromise the favor of God. But just please the people. But we want to be where God wants us to be. And we want to hold up this bloodstained banner. And say for you God I will live. And for you God I will die. Isn't that what the apostle said? Isn't that what apostle Paul said? He said to live for Christ is to die. To die is to gain. He knew it was to gain eternal life. And is not our goal today to gain eternal life, to gain our crown of life. Oh, my God. Thank you, Father. That's what my goal is, is to gain eternal life. He said, for the wages of sin is death. Compromise is death. But the gift of God is eternal life, people. And that's what we're aiming for. We want eternal life. We want to receive jewels in our crown. We want to behold him face to face. So as L.D. Vaughn comes and she's going to introduce our next speaker, let's give the Lord a hand praise and just say, my, my destiny, my goal is eternal life. Amen. Amen, amen. I uh, just want to introduce our next guest speaker, my little man, my little baby. He's really not a baby. He's like 5,000 feet tall than I am. But anyways, I just want to introduce my little brother, uh, Kendrick Jordan. Kind of goes in what Felicia's message was about compromise. We grew up in an area where it was very, very easy to compromise our upbringing. But through God, through prayer, fasting, um, God has kept him. He has been an amazing, he's gone through so much in his life, and it's amazing to say that he has stood faith, st stood still on God. I'm trying to be social, sorry guys. But it's just, it's amazing to see where he's come and where he's at now. And it's just amazing. It really is, it's honestly. It's amazing to be able to say, you know, yes, my brother doesn't, at 17 years old, doesn't have children. At 17 years old, is still 18. Oh, 18, sorry. 18 year old, doesn't have children, still a virgin, had graduated high school, okay, didn't drop out, didn't do drugs, didn't drink, didn't smoke, didn't do any of that. Kept me on the right path. Come on now. That's amazing. It's amazing to say. So I just want to introduce Elder Kendrick Jordan. Preach the word, man. Preach the word. Bring it, Nathan. Bring it, Nathan. Wow. I'm just so thankful to have an older sister like Yvonne, somebody I can look up to and laugh with, tell all my well, yeah, look down to, tell all my problems, because it's good to have a support system to fall back on. Uh, so I'm just going to open up in a word of prayer. Lord God, thank you for letting us be here together, Lord God, to hear your word, oh God, to strengthen, Lord God, to grow together, Lord God, to get closer to you, Lord. Bless me, oh God, as I prepare to speak, oh God. Make my mouth as clay, oh God. Let me not speak, but yet you speak through me, oh God. Use this vessel, oh God, to bring forth your word. It is in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. And like my sister said, me and Felicia's messages go kind of hand in hand. She talked about compromising, and I'm going to talk about taking your stand. Uh, and I'm going to come out of Ephesians 6, 13 and 14. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Now what I want you to focus on is this verse, is having done all to stand, stand. Yeah. You have to stand in this evil day. You have to stand for what you believe in. Yeah. You have to stand upon the word of God. Because yeah. there are people out there 
who think it's just easier to bend, easier to go with the flow, as we say, easier to just go where the world tells you to go. But if everybody's doing the same thing and nobody's different, how can there be change? How can there be growth? How can there be division? How can people be healed? How can people be delivered except somebody take a stand? That's right, that's right. Yeah. Nobody's going to take a stand today because the world says it's a bad thing. It's bad to be different. It's bad to stand up for what you believe in. It's bad to go against what everybody else is saying. Yeah. But it's not bad to be different. It's not bad to stand up for your beliefs. It's not bad to think that it's okay to be a virgin. It's not bad to not smoke and drink. It's not bad to not cuss, to not fight, to not go with what everybody else says. It's not bad to be who you are. It's not bad to be who God made you to be. It's not bad to be Kendrick Jordan. It's not bad to be Felicia Floyd. It's not bad to be Yvonne Doyle. We were all made special and unique, and we have to stand for who we are. But people aren't standing today because they're afraid of what others would think. They're afraid of what will happen to me. I won't have any friends. I won't be popular. I won't be ooh, making all this money. I won't be famous. I won't have my name in neon lights. But that doesn't matter, because you can have all these things, but still be unhappy. That's right. You have billionaires committing suicide yeah. because they're not happy with their situation. Millions of dollars making money every day, but they still take their own life yeah. because they're not happy with who they are and what they've done in their lives. That's what sin does. That's yes. what does. Sin will destroy you from the inside. And it's not just going to destroy you. It can destroy your family. It will destroy your friends. Because the Bible says in Joshua 7 and 13, Get up and sanctify the people and sanctify yourselves, because thus says the Lord of God of Israel, There is an accursed thing in your midst, O Israel, and you cannot stand before your enemies until you take the accursed thing from you. There is something hindering you from standing. Whatever it may be, it may be pornography, it may be That's right. cussing, it may be fighting, it may be drugs, it may be alcohol. Whatever it is, it is hindering you. Before you can stand, you have to take it out of your life. But it's not just sitting in your life. There's people around you who are being a bad example and causing you to fall. Because not everyone is for your good. Not everyone wants you to succeed. Not everyone wants you to be the best that you can be. Because the Bible says... Evil company corrupts good manners. Yes, right. We have a saying in the world, birds of a feather, birds of a feather flock together. Yes. That means if you hang around people who fuss and fight and drink and cuss, eventually you're going to start leaning in that direction. Oh. You're going to start, as Felicia said, compromising your morals. You're going to stop taking a stand. And you're going to go ahead and bow down to what they believe. You're going to bow down. You're going to drop down onto their level. You're going to drop down and do what they do. When God placed you to stand tall and be an example unto them. Because mm -hmm. I believe that if somebody would have taken a stand, the children of Columbine wouldn't have shot at the school. Right. If their parents... How can your parents not know what's going on in your own house? Your kids loading up ammunition, building bombs in your garage, and you don't notice what's happening? You don't notice your kids changing? Right, right, right. How? Because they were not taking a stand. They were afraid to go to their child and say, Johnny, what's wrong? Johnny, what's going on? Don't do this, Johnny. This is bad. This isn't what's right. You're not supposed to be like this. I raised you better than this. But no, they were like, oh, Johnny's fine. It's okay. Everything's good. Nothing's wrong with him. I'm just going to leave him alone. Let him go to his room for five hours and not speak to nobody. No, you better knock on that door. And be like, Johnny, are you okay? Come out here. We're having some family time. It's time for family dinner. Teach your children how they're Go supposed ahead. to live. Go be ahead. an example that they can be proud of. Go ahead, man. Right, 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 right. The reason. Woo, praise the name of Jesus. Mm. Go ahead, it's funny. Mm. Go ahead, prophet. Mm. People wonder why the black community is bad as it is now. Go ahead, go ahead, say It's that. because fathers are not in the home. Black fathers are not taking a stand raising their black sons and daughters how they're supposed to be in this world. Instead, we're filling up the prisons. We're filling up the juvenile detention centers. Yeah. We're filling up yeah. the body bags yeah. because the fathers won't take a stand in their homes. They won't raise up their kids how they're supposed to be. They'll leave it to the mothers. Sure, it's fine having a mother. I was raised by myself with my mother for years, but she needs help. She can't do it all by herself. It's hard raising three kids by yourself, working a job, trying to feed everybody, trying to raise them up good. But I'm thankful that my mother did what she had to do to keep us alive. But I'm standing here today with my sister. She has her own family, her own husband and two kids. My own little sister is here. I'm, I can say we're good. 
Yeah, we're good. All filled with the Holy Ghost. All living good lives. We're about to graduate high school already. We're not going to beat the statistics anymore. We've already beat the statistics. We are above what the world said we could be because we decided to take a stand. That's right. Yes. There has to be a voice crying out in the wilderness. Go ahead. There has to be somebody who shall not bow down so that other people around you will have something to look at. Because people are watching, whether you believe it or not. They're waiting to see if you're the real deal. If you're really about what you walk. If you talk what you walk. If you walk what you talk. They're waiting to see if you're real. If you stand up for what you believe in, you say you don't cuss, okay. Let's see what happens if I do this. I'm going to smack you in your face. What you going to do now? You going to get mad? You going to fight me? But I thought you said you don't fight. I thought you said you were a good person. It's all a trap, I'm telling you. They're trying to set you up for failure, but you got to stand upon the word, which is the rock. When the word, when I looked at the word stand, I came up with some funny things. It said you have to endure or to remain. So if you're going to endure, that means you're going to have to go through some things. That means some things are going to happen in your life. That means there's going to be some trials and some tests that are going to knock you down, that are going to try and take you out, that are going to try and kill you, but you have to endure the hardship like a good soldier in the Lord. And if you're a soldier, soldiers go through some things, y'all. Soldiers have to fight day to day just to survive. They have to fight, not just for themselves, but for their families, for the people back at home, for the people on the jobs, for the people in the schools. They have to fight. Every day. It's not easy. It's not going to be a walk in the park. No, but the Bible never said it was going to be easy. He just said he's going to provide a way of escape for you. He said that he shall make a way out of no way, that he shall take upon your burdens, and that he shall give you rest. Rest in the storms. Rest in the trials. Rest in the tribulations. When nobody else will stand with you, God will stand behind you and say, I got you, my daughter. I got you, my son. I was there when nobody else was there for you. I was there when people put you down. I was there when they said you were never amount to anything. I was the one who lifted you up and dusted you off and placed you back on your feet and told you to walk this walk. And I just thank God for what he's done in our lives. Because the Bible says, Rejoice not, O my enemies, for when I fall, I shall arise. When you knock me down, I shall arise. When you trip me up, I shall arise. When the storms of life come and blow me away, don't rejoice because I will get back up stronger than I was before. Thank you, Jesus. Because what the enemy caused for our harm, God turned it around for our good. Yeah. He turned it around to make us stronger. Because you wouldn't be who you are today if you hadn't gone through what you had. Yep, that's it. There's no telling what would have happened. That bullet could have been for you. That's right. You could have gotten that car crash and it could have taken you out. You could have been shot, stabbed, killed, but got God. sick. But by the grace of God, we're still standing here today. But God, come on. Able to speak able to walk, able to clap our hands, able to walk, able to jump on our feet, because there's somebody who can't walk. There's somebody who can't stand anymore. His time and his chance has come and gone, but you can still stand. You can still reach out to somebody. You can still save a soul. You can still stop the next school shooting. You can stop the next Boston Marathon bombing. You can stop the next Columbine if only you would take a stand and speak what the God has told you to speak and stand upon the words and the principles that he has put in you. In Exodus 30, 30, 33 and 21, the Lord said, and the Lord said, behold, there is a place by me and thou shalt stand upon a rock. Thou shalt endure upon a rock. Thou shalt remain upon a rock. And the rock is the word of God. The rock is what we live by daily. The rock is what's going to get us through this world, what's going to get us through these hard times. But after you stand, you have to stand still. You have to wait for instructions from the Lord. You have to wait for him to fight your battles, to deal with your problems. Because the Lord said in Numbers 9 and 18, And Moses said unto them, Stand still, that I may hear what the Lord commands concerning you. The Lord already sees what you're going through. He's just waiting for you to stand up. 
He's waiting for you to dust yourself off and say, you know what, I'm done with this devil. You ain't going to stop me with this no more. To get up out of your situations, to get up out of your pity party, to get up out of this, oh me, oh my, I can't do this. I'm not strong enough. And just stand up and say, I am more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthens me. I am victorious. I have the keys to the kingdom in my hand. I am the child of a king. I am a royal priesthood and a holy nation. He's waiting for you to stand up and realize who you are. To realize you have power to tread over serpents, to eat any deadly thing, and it shall not hurt you. But we've got it in our minds that we can't do anything, that we're just nothing, that I'm just Kendra Jordan, an 18 year old kid who can't really say much. But you can change the world. That's right, you sure can. You can change the world. All you have to do is stand up and speak out. With this, I'm going to close. In Job 7 and 13, I mean, no, excuse me, sorry. In Job 37 and 14, listen to this, O Job. Stand still and consider the wondrous works of God. God is going to do wonderful, each, wonderful things in each and every one of your lives. You just have to stand still and be willing to let him work. Let him cut out all the pain. Let him cut out all the hurt that has been holding you down. Let go of your past and move on to a brighter future because it's only going to get better. There's a rainbow on the other side of the storm. We have to be like the palm trees. And I love this analogy that I heard Pastor Eugene use before. But when the storm comes, the palm trees may lean a little bit. They get pushed down by the wind and the waves, but they never break. And as soon as the storm is over, the palm trees stand right back up as if nothing happened. Standing there strong and ready for the next storm to come. Thank you. Let's just stand and give the Lord a hand. But let's thank God for the elder Kendrick Jordan and Elder Felicia Floyd. Let me tell you something, church. These are our future. We think a lot of time, I thank God. Pastor Eugene mentioned some earlier, you know, we, we come to church a lot of time and we're worried about traditions of men. But God is tearing down the traditions of men. And he's building and fortifying the walls of the gospel. And he's going to use young people He's going to use young people. You know why? Because they have not been indoctrinated. They have not been influenced. They have not been perverted and converted by the traditions of men. We come and we worry about how we look, how we're going to dress. You got to come in a suit and tie. God said, come as you are. And the young generation, they're coming to God just as they are. They're not concerned if they got on a tie. They're not concerned if they're wearing a suit jacket. They come with their tattoos. They come with their torn jeans. They come with their shirts cut up and torn. But they're coming with a willing heart. With a heart and a mind that says, God, I've been through so much. I don't know which way to turn. I look at the older generation. But all I see is tradition of men. But I need a God that can, like the elder Kendrick said, that will able and cause me to be able to stand against the peer pressure, to stand against the dope pushers, to stand against immorality, God, that is so prevalent in this generation. And God is raising up 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13 year old, 12 year old, 11 year old, 10 year old, 9 year old, 8 year old, 7 year old to preach the gospel of the kingdom. He called Samuel. He called Samuel as he dimmed the light upon Eli. Because Eli had got so used to the ways of himself that God dimmed the eyes of the man of God and raised the child up to take his place. Yes. So don't ever think just because you are an adult and your children are young that they don't have a voice in God. 
because God has showed us time and time again through the word of God. He called David That's right. as he took the anointing from Saul and put it upon a child. So what we got to understand on the generation is that God's not concerned with your traditions. He's not concerned with how you think church should be run. He's not concerned with how you think people should look when they come to the house of God. He's concerned about somebody that has a really heart to say, Lord, here I am. Thy servant heareth. God is looking for a listening ear. Yeah, 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 Lord. You don't care how old you are, how long you've been in church, Hallelujah, how long you've been saved, how long you've been preaching the gospel. He said, I'm looking for somebody that can hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And if I got to call a child, I'll raise them up to take your place. Because you have. Your eyes have grown dim. Oh my God. Thank you, and your ears have become dull of hearing. But I will raise a child. Thank God. Elder Felicia, Elder Kendrick, for the word of God. Yes, Lord. Because this is what it's going to take to reach this generation. Yes. It's going to take the voice of young people Cry out in the wilderness. Come and see a man that can save. You may be young, but you can live for God. It's going to take young people like Elder Kendrick and Elder Felicia to reach this generation. And all the saints, don't get upset. Don't try to suppress them or try to oppress them. Let's get behind our young people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he preach the word of God. Because that's what it's going to take in this hour. Young men, young women, mighty and strong to hold up the banner of Jesus Christ. So we thank God for our young people. Let's give our young people a hand. And every one of you young people sitting out there right now that has come first time visiting. God has a call on you. There's Samuels that are there. Amen. That's coming here today. There are Deborahs. There are, there are a Davids that are out here today. My God. Yes, Lord. There are Johns that are out here today. Who wrote the book of Revelation? He was a young, young child when God called him. Come on. God has an anointing for your life, for your children's life. Yes. Encourage it. Nurture it. Pray for it. Ask God to raise them up to be men and women of the cross. Yeah, 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 yeah. We need more soldiers in the army. God is calling not for a few, but for a lot of good men and women that will stand and fight for what is right. To hold up the bloodstained banner and say there is still a God in Israel. So we thank God for our young people today. We thank God for those powerful words about standing and about compromise that came from a 17-year-old and an 18-year-old that are preaching the gospel. The Bible says train up a child in the way that they should go. And you know what? The Father's Father International Ministry is going to train up our children from the pew, from the diapers, to begin to call upon the name of the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we thank God. We thank God for that powerful word. Those powerful words that were shared with us today and on Friday. We thank God for them. 